All right, praise God. Praise God. All right, we're going to continue or at least finish up tonight, I hope, our series on the Satanic Rebellion and the Origin of Satan. And um, as usual, if you have questions, if they can be held off until the end, um, we can, we'd like to deal with them so that we can try to get through the teaching. Um, one of the reasons why this is a part three is because we couldn't really finish up parts one and parts two because we were trying to answer questions within the study and so we couldn't get through everything. So we, we changed it from two parts to three parts so that we could try to get all the information in. So, but let's try to get it done tonight. Um, if the question is really burning in your heart and we can ask and answer quickly, then we'll be more than happy to because after all, this is a Bible study. But, um, but I would, um, hopefully you can save your questions at the end. And, and there's nothing wrong with um, quick questions and quick comments within the study. But if it's what I'm saying, if it's a long, detailed question, if it can be wait, if it can wait to the end, then um, that would be helpful. Praise God. Amen. But um, let's go over some of the things we talked about last week and the week before, just to give a summary of what we've been talking about. But um, in the last several lessons, we learned that something catastrophic happened to the earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. You remember where the um, verse 2 says that now the earth was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then it said that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. But, um, but we learned from a study of the word and, or it was, excuse me, the word was, and um, we looked at it from a couple of different Bible translations, some literal Bible translations, that that word was could actually be changed to became. And we saw that the earth became void or became catastrophic, became chaotic. And so we know that if you can use your sanctified imagination for a moment, God, before any other anybody was ever created, the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, created a heaven and created an earth and planted creatures on um, in, in both places and um and this was before Adam and Eve were ever created and the, and everything was beautiful wonderful and um just going well but then something chaotic we get to verse 2 and we find out that something chaotic and very bad happened to the earth um for another reference for that which we won't talk about tonight is in Isaiah 45, which um, tells you in even more detail about what happened in Genesis chapter one, verse two. But that we say that for another Bible study. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. But if you ever wondered about why, you know, there's what, why is it that Adam and Eve um, from the time of Adam and Eve till now is like only the earth is supposed to be only like 6000 years old, but yet they find archaeological stuff. That tells you that uh, the earth is millions of years old. That, that's the simple answer to the question. Hallelujah. I mean, there's no such thing as evolution. Evolution is a lie. Some Christians try to um, fit evolution into Genesis chapter 1, but it won't fit there. There's no fitting of evolution in it. Praise God. You would really have to change the words of Genesis chapter 1 to fit that. Um, there's no young earth, as some people try to teach. Because um, you can't explain the archaeological stuff with a young earth. And the young earth can't even, and what the biggest problem with the young earth is not even the archaeological facts. The biggest problem with the young earth is you can't explain Satan with it. Because if everything was created in that one day and Satan fell in just one day, God didn't do a very good job. I mean, how in the heck are you going to be created in one day and then fall in that same day? So it's um it's really ridiculous what some people teach. So the the biggest answer is that God created the heavens and the earth a long, long, long time ago, and one day there was a there happened to happen something that happened that caused destruction upon the earth that the good earth that God created. Praise God. 
All right, and but before that happened, there was no such thing as evil. Um, there was no pain. There was no destruction. All all that came after, not before, but after Satan rebelled against God. God is not a destructive God. And we learn, and we're going to learn a little bit more today, that Lucifer's pride or Lucifer's um, fall was due to pride. And it was due to his failure to live by God's principles of love and righteousness. Hallelujah. And we learned this, we looked at this last week and we'll look at it again today about how God's love works. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is a description of God and a description of how his love works. But, and we saw that evil begins when love is absent. And we learned that love is unselfish and is not prideful, praise God. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 and 5 says, charity, just change that word to, from, from charity to love since we're looking at the King James Version. Um, love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunts not itself and is not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Focus on that part where it says that seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked and thinketh no evil. Praise God. See, it's not. Um, it does not vaunt itself. If you love, you're not going to have your nose up in the air. Praise God. Amen. If you love, you're not seeking what what can be a blessing to only to you. You're seeking things. That can help others. Praise Jesus. Amen. When you're praying, you're not going to be praying for just yourself. There's nothing wrong with praying for yourself because you need things. Hallelujah. Amen. But you, but your, if your prayers are focused only on you, they're selfish. Love seeks not her own, but seeks others. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Satan violated every last one of those principles. He didn't walk in God's kingdom of love. When you don't, when when you have, when you're walking in God's kingdom of love, y'all remember. Some of y'all may here may remember when we taught on the um, love, the law of the kingdom. We taught a series on that, and we learned that when you're walking in the love principles, you won't have any problems whatsoever. If the whole world was walking in love, you wouldn't have what happened in Charlottesville last week. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have what was happening in North Korea. You wouldn't have the, the all. Everything that's happening in this world right now is due to lack of love. Amen. Everything that, uh, everything negative that's happening in this world is due to Satan and demonic forces influencing it, and they have no love at all. Amen. But if everybody walked in love as it was uh, before the fall of Satan, you would have no disharmony. You know, think about it. Um, God created several different categories of angels there was no racism between them well i'm a seraphim but i'm a cherubim <laughs> cherubim are superior to seraphim there was none of that Amen. but here today we got i'm white we're we're superior to blacks and then you got on the other side we're black we're superior to whites no ain't nobody superior to nobody <laughs> Your skin color doesn't make you superior. Praise God. Amen. Your skin color is due to your melatonin, not due to your to your brain cells. Amen. I, I've met some smart people that were white, that's smarter than me, and I've met some white people that were dumber than me. Praise God. Amen. And I'm black. Hallelujah. Amen. I've met some Asians. I've met a lot of Asians that were smarter than me. <laughs> Intellectually, but I've met a lot of Asians that were dumber than me. Praise God. So um, it has nothing to do with skin color. None of it, none of that is where is um, God didn't create a certain skin color or race to be superior to another. Praise God. He didn't even create Israel to be superior to another to another culture. Amen. The only thing that made um, Israel different from the other nations was that they had Jesus. I mean, it was Jesus really, but Yahweh was their God. Praise the Lord. So there's no no nothing is superior than, than the other. See, love doesn't look at itself as superior. Love looks at itself as 
trying to do for others. Praise God. All right. So the um, we need to look at focus on the nature of God, and we see that Satan is the total opposite of what God is like. Now look at this. It says, "He that knoweth not God." He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Say that. Oh. Yeah. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might through him. That we might live through him. Herein is love. Herein is love. Not that we love God. But that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation. For our sins. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So God is love. And God sent Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins. The, everything we just read about. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Is God manifested? Praise the Lord. Amen. If you want to understand what, what God is like, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells you. He is unselfish. Very kind. He's not self-seeking. God does not vaunt himself up. Praise God. Amen. Whenever you read about you know, God describing himself, you know, if he says, tells you he's mighty, he's all-powerful, things of that nature, it's not God bragging about himself. It's God giving you confidence in himself. For example, I might tell people I'm a very good systems administrator. I'm a very good um, computer specialist. Hallelujah. And I am. But it's not, I'm not bragging on myself. I'm giving you confidence so that you can come to me for help. You know, how, how many people that I have to help with um, computer stuff, you know, they need to know that I can help them. The same thing as, as a pastor. You know, it, that doesn't, uh, it's not humble for you to say, well, I'm a terrible pastor. Then you shouldn't be pastoring. Amen. Well, I'm a horrible Bible teacher. Then you shouldn't teach the Bible. I'm a good Bible teacher. Praise God. Because God has given me his anointing. And you can and you can have confidence to sit under this Bible teaching and receive help. But I'm but I say that out of love and not out of bragging. You know, because I got my I got issues. Glory to God. Lord knows I got some issues. So but I'm confident in what God has given me. And God is confident in himself and he wants you to be confident in him. So God is not high and got his nose up in the air. A braggart is somebody who beats his chest and, and is um, going to talk about himself just to impress you. Amen. Amen. He don't care about whether you got confidence in him or not. He don't care about whether he's going to help you or not. He's there to just talk, brag about how good he is and how you need to fall down at his feet and worship him. That's not our God. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get to know the love of God, you won't be feel compelled to, to worship him. You'll want to worship him. I, I want to worship this God because he's Amen. loving. Man, he's been good to me. Yeah. So so that that and that's the complete opposite of the devil. Praise God. Amen. Our God is a God of unselfish, agape, unconditional love. Satan is a horrid, evil selfish being whose only focus is on himself and gets you to focus only on yourself. Praise Jesus. Amen. So let's um, briefly go over this. God's kingdom and nature is pure, unadulterated agape love. That word agape is um, a Greek word that means unconditional. Um, or some people pronounce it agape. However you pronounce it. Agape or agape. Yeah. I say tomato, you say tomato. All right. All right. God's love nature is others focused rather than self focused. Hallelujah. God is is so others focused. And that's where he wants us to be. I tell you, it could, being self focused, man, you all, it, it leads to depression. It leads to um, all kinds of emotional instability, anger. When you're others focused, and as you learn to become more and more others focused, man, you find out you're less depressed. You're you're less um, hurt by what people say and do. You're you're less concerned about um, 
what people say about you. Praise God. Amen. I'm very, I'm very unconcerned about what people say about me. Unless somebody going around saying I'm messing around on my wife, then I get concerned. Then we're going to fight. <laughs> or they tell me I'm still, or somebody accused me of stealing money from the church. Then we're going to fight. Other than that, you can say you can say anything else you want about me. Praise God. All right. And, but God's love, the type of love that God has, it sacrifices for the good of others and is willing to give even at the great loss to himself. I mean, what other way can you explain God's love than Jesus Christ and the cross of Christ? Praise Jesus. Amen. The cross of Christ we know we we fought, we don't um, here we believe we really should put a lot of emphasis on the resurrection, but you couldn't have the resurrection until you first had the cross. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. And Jesus died on that cross for you and me. He didn't have to go there. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't even have to leave heaven, where he was king, but he did all that at grace, lost to himself. That's God. That describes God's love. And I guarantee you, the Father would have done the same thing. Amen. The Holy Spirit would have done the same thing. So God's kingdom always, before Satan fell, it always ran on the basis of love. It was Satan who introduced selfishness. So he introduced the ambition to be and have something in spite of the harm that it brings to others. And that's what selfishness is. It's the ambition to be and have something in spite of the harm that it brings to others. You know what they call the dog eat dog world. Mm -hmm. How people have to, especially in corporate America, people have to step on and destroy each other to reach the top. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's not God's way of doing things. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And that should not be God's people's way of doing things. Now, let's contrast um, God's nature with Satan's nature. Or we don't have to contrast it because the Bible is very clear. And the Bible makes a clear distinction between God's nature and the nature of the devil. And the Bible tells you exactly who people who claim to be Christians, who they follow and by how they act. Hallelujah. And let me say this before I read the scripture. We, we often hear people say, well, you can't judge me. God knows my heart. Let me tell you something, baby. We shall know them by their fruit. Praise God. And if you're living like a devil and claiming to be a Christian, I can judge you. Oh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. See, this is what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say to, not to judge. It says, judge not, lest ye be judged. For with the same measure that you meet, that you judge, it shall be measured back to you. And as a, you know, as a leader, I have to bring certain amounts of judgment. If you're acting bad and acting crazy, I got to tell you. Praise God. But that's not, I'm not judging you to condemn you. I'm judging you to, t to help you. Praise Jesus. When we should want God's judgment in that area too. Just like David used to say, judge me. See if there's any wicked way in me. Praise God. Amen. I ask God to do that. Judge me, Lord. Show me if, where I'm messing up so I can do right by you. But um, if we know by how we act, whether we're following God's way or Satan's way, and 1st John chapter 3 verses 10 through 12 says this in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whoever doeth not righteousness is not of God there you there you go with that you can't judge me yes yes you well the Bible's already judged you praise God Amen. neither he that loveth not his brother. You don't love your, your fellow brother, your, your fellow Christians? I don't want to be around them. They, they get on my nerves. Well, guess what? You're getting on their nerves, so they're probably happy you ain't around. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's go on. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And then John gives us an example. Not as Cain, who is of that wicked one? Who's the wicked one? Who's the wicked one, y'all? The, 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 exactly. Well, yeah, he and he has wicked spirits under him, yeah. wicked demons or you know evil spirits. But he is. But when it says the wicked one, we definitely know that that's a reference to Satan himself. 
But he was that he but talks about Cain who was of that wicked one and slew or killed his brother. And wherefore he slew him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Praise God. Amen. So God's children and Satan's children are distinguished not by how many times you can run around the church and sing hallelujah. <laughs> not by how you can dance and do the do the Holy Ghost jig. It's not by how you can swing from the chandeliers. Thank God we ain't got any here. <laughs> it's not by how well you can sing. It's not even by how good you can preach. Praise God. Amen. It is by your love for one another. I, the saddest thing I've had to hear this week. I, there was a church I was supposed to be preaching at this um, coming November. I was supposed to be preaching at their men's fellowship. And then I got a message that the church closed down. And I was, it just broke my heart because why? You know, I hate when churches close down. And then um, I get more information about it. And it all and it was all because of strife. Lies being spread by the pastor's own members against him. And it, it was just, it, I don't even want to get into the, uh, a full description of it. It would it'd take a while because it took me a while to hear all the stuff that had happened. But, um, but that's not love. That's not godly people. And many of these people claim to be saved. Many of these people claim to be born again. And they're going around lying and calling and causing discord amongst the others, gossiping and, and causing strife and trying to destroy the church from within. It's a sad, sad thing. But that's not God's people, praise God. That was nothing but the devil working through people who claim to be born again Christians. So how do we know that we're we're true children of God? By how we treat one another. Amen. 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 Our love for each other tells Amen. everything. Our hatred. Oh, I can't stand that sister. I don't know why. Pastor letting her get up and sing. The reason why is because you can't stand her and God don't want you up there singing. <laughs> Amen. Until you get yourself off of that, that kind of attitude, then get... God, God can't, he can't, it's not that he don't want to, he cannot do anything with you. Praise God. So when we go around lying on each other and talking bad about each other, gossiping and, and putting down the pastor, putting down the church, we're, we're showing we're not children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus was totally different in the way he did things. And we'll see in Philippians chapter um, 2. That he went a different route than Satan. See, in Isaiah chapter 14, Satan went the route of trying to exalt himself. You remember that in Isaiah 14? I think we looked at it last week. If he didn't, then forgive me. But let's, you know what, turn with your Bibles to Isaiah 14 real quickly. I think we did look at it last week. But I, I think in light of um, looking at Jesus' opposite direction, it's good to... Read that scripture one more time. For those who are watching this by video, my apologies for not having that on the slide, but hopefully you got a Bible with you that you can read along with us. Praise God. Isaiah 14. This is Isaiah 14 and Isaiah, um, and excuse me, Jer not Jeremiah, um, Ezekiel. 28 are two passages that go into a lot more detail about how Satan fell or we call or as we call them in this Bible study the origin of Satan but here in Isaiah 14 it's, let's start with verse 12 it says how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut to the down to the ground which this weaken the nations for thou said in thine heart I will ascend into heaven notice look at look at this now Satan says I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God he's going to exalt himself he's not going to wait for God's exaltation that happens a lot in, in God's amongst God's people too it happens in the world a lot because we know that the world of children of the devil, but it shouldn't be happening in God's church. Praise God. It says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also 
upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Praise God. Here we have self-exaltation at its worst. Satan decided he's going to exalt himself. He's going to be like the Most High. He's going to try to take Jesus' position. But now, look at Philippians chapter 2 and see the opposite direction that Jesus went. Paul tells the people in Philippians, in the Philippian church, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But look at this, he said, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Here, Almighty God takes upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross thank you sweetheart I needed that so Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 8 is the direct opposite of what we read in Isaiah 14 Satan exalted himself. God, Jesus is God. Jesus humbled himself. Notice again. Satan exalted himself. Jesus humbled himself. Two different types of people. Two different types of beings. Praise God. I would rather act like Jesus than Satan. But when I exalt myself, when I get pompous and proud and think that I'm somebody that I'm not, then I'm acting like Satan and not Jesus. But let's um let's go, let's summarize this. Jesus chose to show that God Himself is willing to become a servant, proving that his way of ruling is nothing like Lucifer's. Amen. Jesus tells his disciples that they are not to be like Gentile rulers who often act like Satan. They are to be servants. Glory to God. You can find that in Matthew 23, 8-12, Mark 10, 41-45. If you know the story, um, the disciple, you know, two of Jesus' disciples came and, and you know, I think it was James and John that came and said, Oh, Jesus, can we sit on your left and on your right? When, and when your kingdom comes, you know, they wanted exaltation. And then all the other disciples got mad because it's like, you're trying to take my position. What's wrong with you? And Jesus knew what was what the problem was. See, they're thinking of, you know, when Jesus becomes um, king and they get to the, the, be a part of the kingdom, then they're going to exercise power. But as, just, as we were talking about earlier, you know, Pastor Mary pointed out the fact that some peop, some pastors who go to witch doctors to grow their church, they're looking for power for selfish reasons. And Jesus rebuked them and taught them that that's not the way it's going to be amongst you. Praise God. Amen. Those who are servants of those who are rulers must be like servants. Satan's way of ruling is to oppress the people, overpower the people to um, to get what he can and drain the people. Look what happens in North Korea for, is a, as a good example. The dictator over there is living large and in charge while most of the people over there are starving. He's got, he's got all kinds of uh, riches and luxuries and he rules with an iron fist. Praise God. God doesn't want you and I to be that way. You know, too many of us become power hungry. They said that one of the three of the biggest temptations for men, anyway, is money, women, and power. Or for um, for human beings, money, sex, and power. And, you know, those are the three things that people strive after in the world. And none of them bring any lasting satisfaction. But God, that's not for God's people. 
God's way is for you and I to become like him. Praise God. When you humble yourself, then you'll be exalted as Jesus, as our Lord was. And then, thankfully, Peter learned this lesson because he later told those of us that are leaders that we are not the Lord it over the people. Praise the Lord. If you're in a church where the pastor is uh, is oppressive and he um, manipulates and uses God's divine judgment to get you to do what he wants, then you're in the wrong church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we should be obedient to our leaders. I was obedient to the pastors I was under. Praise God. And some of them were some difficult people to be under. Praise Jesus. And I think God put me under them intentionally so I can learn some things. But, um, it, and, you know, and I was under some very wonderful leaders, too. And I learned from them how to be loving. Praise God. Um, you know, I, I hope my, my former pastor, Cullen Ohashi, is here in this, or he's ever take a chance to listen to these videos. But he, when I was in um, Japan, I was under a pastor named Cullen Ohashi, sweet guy. Um, one of the sweetest guys you could know. He's funny. Um, he, he's, he's from Hawaii. But he's part. He was um. He was actually full-blooded Japanese, but he didn't know any Japanese. But um. But you know, Cullen, he did well. He could he could pass at the church and be a sweet guy and be a friendly guy. But when he wanted things done, he had his way of saying, "This is what you know." Like one time when we were all coming in late for church, you know, not well, not me so much. Well, yeah, kind of I was, but it was mostly my wife's fault. But anyway, <laughs> but, yeah, it, was, it really kind of was. She, she, she would admit it. But, you know, <laughs> I like being on time. I'm a military man. But yeah. but um, we were coming in. You know, but but the problem is everybody was coming in late. And um, one day our pastor got up. He said, you know, he said, I don't want any more here, any more about this. This is Hawaiian time. Or this is door of faith time. I want y'all to be here on time from now on. You know, as nice as we he was, we took him seriously. <laughs> and I guarantee you, everybody was there either on time or before that next week. Praise God. <laughs> he didn't even have, he didn't have to scream. He didn't have to holler. All he had to do was say that, and we were there. Praise God. Amen. And see, that's because people respect they respected their leader. They respected their pastor. As a leader, he didn't have to scream and holler and and to command and um, call down fire and lightning to destroy us if we don't be there on time next week. Praise God. I hope that that's the right thing to do. That's exactly. We knew we were wrong anyway. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so we, so that's the way God wants His leaders to be. He wants church leaders. If you're ever called to be a pastor or any uh, any type of church leader, remember you're there to serve. And not to be a Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I've heard some pastors refer to themselves as, you know, ruling over their people. You know, I, well, in a sense you do, but not the way you think. You rule as in leading. You don't rule as in bossing people around. Hallelujah. Amen. And the other thing, it is possible, as we stated so many times, that Lucifer actually wanted the position that the pre-incarnated Jesus Christ that he occupied. And, you know, I got a couple of um, quotes from great men of God that I really respect. Lindsey, I mean, Gordon Lindsey, excuse me. He's the founder of the Bible school in Texas called Christ for the Nations. Great man of God. He was um, mightily, um, God mightily worked through him in the healing revivals back in the 50s. You know, that back then that's when, um, the manifestation of God's healing gifts really began to manifest, you know, and, and people started um, really receiving the power of God to heal. You know, that, that was where Kenneth Hagin, um, Oral Roberts, um, many men of God were really part of that mighty move of God back then. And the healing power of God was really going through the nation to heal people. And Gordon Lindsay was one of them, and he started a Bible school called Christ for the Nations which he used to train future ministers of God. But he wrote this in one of his books. I've read many of his books. In his, one of his books, Satan's Rebellion and Fall, says Lucifer, though vice regent, the chief archangel and anointed sheriff, was to hold a lesser position than Christ. 
when it became evident to Lucifer that he was not to have the supreme position, he saw his ambitions frustrated. It was this which resulted in his rebellion. Jeremiah, if you, you don't have to write all that down, son. I can probably print this out for you later on, okay? If you if you want all this, I'll print it all out for you. But um, but it, but we see here from this quote, and I believe that what Gordon Lindsay is saying is true, that Satan really wanted the position that only that the Son of God held. Praise God. He was jealous for a position that he couldn't have. He didn't want to be like the Father. He wanted Jesus' position. He thought he should take over from there. You, you ever seen anybody jealous with somebody else's position? Yeah, I, I've seen it happen. I, well, I ain't even seen it happen. I was there. I was like that myself in some cases. Get mad because somebody has something or some position in the church or somewhere that I didn't have. Somebody had a closeness to the pastor that I didn't have. It used to make me mad. I wanted to see them destroyed. I wouldn't say it out loud. I wouldn't even say it to my wife. I just say it to myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, God, God has a way of, of working in your heart and changing you. Praise God. Amen. As you grow more and more into the things of Christ. But um, another one of my favorite um, Bible teachers, Derek Prince, and I think most of y'all know that he's one of my favorites. One of the greatest Bible teachers, especially during the charismatic movement of the 60s and 70s and 80s. But um, Derek Prince, in his book, War in Heaven, God's Epic Battle with Evil, he writes this, Scripture confronts us with a deliberate contrast between Lucifer and Jesus. I don't know why my nose keeps itching, but um, forgive me for that. Lucifer was not in the form of God. He was a created being. He had no right to be equal with God, yet he grasped at equality with God. And when he reached up, he slipped and fell. On the other hand, Jesus was by divine nature, was was divine by eternal nature and enjoyed equality with God. He did not need to grasp it, but rather he humbled himself. Praise God. And so there's the difference right there between God and the devil. God humbled himself. Jesus humbled himself. Satan exalted himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then um, let's look at Ezekiel 28, verse 18. I want you to see something here. How Satan actually brought about this his um, fall and the war that he engaged it with God. In Ezekiel 28, 18, it says, Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So I highlighted that passage by the iniquity of thy traffic because I want you to see something here. Whenever somebody gets overly ambitious and they want something more than what they have, they will always try to slander the one that has that position that they don't have. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And one of the, and how Satan began to fall is through slandering God. And that's how he won a third of the angels to his side. And so um that word traffic it is translated or or um another translation says merchandise. But it's translated, but the way it's translated, um, or the investigation of the root, according to, to um, P.H. Pember, it signifies detraction or slander. And we know that the very name devil means the slanderer or malignant accuser. Praise God. And so Satan engaged in slander. And that's what happens when we don't love people. See, Remember what we just read in 1 John chapter 4, we said that Cain killed his brother? Don't you know Jesus said that even if you never physically murdered anybody, when you slander somebody, you are you are equal, that is equal to murdering them? Don't you know you can murder somebody's character? You can destroy them for life. If you go around and call somebody a, a pedophile, 
And even if the, if, if they never were, if, if it gets around and everybody starts believing it, it doesn't matter what they do to clear their reputation. That stigma is always going to be on them. And so it's sad when people do that. Like I was just telling you a moment ago about the church that's been destroyed. The church was destroyed due to a slander of the pastor. A vicious lie was told about him that absolutely, positively was not true about him. But that vicious lie ended up destroying God's church. Praise God. And so um, that's how Satan tried to destroy God. Was He knew he couldn't destroy God physically. He knew, you know, and I can tell you right now, the pastor I'm talking about, he's a big dude. Try to, I wouldn't try to get into a fight with him, praise God. If we were both in the world, I'd, I'd shoot him first. <laughs> but that's how big he was. So I don't think anybody in that church probably could have taken him on physically. And most, most of the issues came from what I understand was from the women in that church. Um, and it's sad because they couldn't take him on physically, so they just slandered him by destroying his character. Hallelujah. And that's what Satan did to God. He couldn't, you can't dis destroy an all-powerful God physically, but you can slander his character. People slander God's character to this day. Why does God have such a bad rep in this world? Why do so many people think that God is a bad God instead of the good God he really is? Because so many people, including preachers, have slandered God's character. Uh, there's Isaiah 14. We were The one we read from the Bible is actually up here on the screen. I don't know why I had it in in this particular order. Uh -uh. We won't read the whole thing because we're almost out of time and I want to give you all time to talk, talk and ask your questions. But Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, notice that we got certain words highlighted. Um, Satan's five I wills. Notice that it's all self-focused. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. That's the self-focused individual, always talking about himself and what he wants. Never concerned about you. A person that's others-focused will not talk about himself, and the only time he'll talk about himself is to tell you how he could confidently help you in your situation. Praise God. So um, Satan is was the epitome of selfishness. He was focused on I will or his will. And I can tell you right now, when if there's more than one will in God's kingdom, then there's two wills, praise God. Before Satan fell, there was only one will, and it was God's will, and everyone was happy to do God's will. The problem is that God gave everybody free will. And he gave them the and they had that means they had the freedom to oppose his will. But in such a beautiful universe, why would anybody want to oppose his will? But yet it was opposed. And so these I wills of Satan um, proved another will and another will that goes against God's will is the origin of sin. And we and Satan invented evil by perverting the ways of God. In Acts chapter 13, verse 10, when um, Paul confronts the sorcerer who was opposing Paul, Paul says to them, he says, and said, O full of subtly and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all unrighteousness. The devil is the enemy of all righteousness. Praise God. Amen. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? So Satan's ways are simply a perversion of God's, God's ways. Um, so let's summarize this. Evil was introduced when God's good will was opposed by the will of another. Praise God. In the universe, there was one will, the will of unselfish, others-focused love, Lucifer's selfish will against the will of the love will of the triune God. When he opposed a will that is good, evil was born, and he was the father of it. As we notice the constant I wills of the devil in, um, in those slides, and that's the basis of sin. The basis of sin is caring only about you. Amen? Amen. 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 So that ends our Bible study. Amen. We have a few minutes for questions. 
answers, comments, complaints, disagreements. All disagreements will be deleted. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. <laughs> Any questions? Comments? Suggestions? All right, I I give you some give you time. Did you learn anything tonight? Mm -hmm. Praise God. If we learn anything, we learned that we don't want to be like the devil. And it's good to learn how the devil fell because it gives us practical knowledge of what we're doing or what we shouldn't be doing. And it helps us to see when we see certain things coming in God's church, then we need to learn to put a stop to them. Praise God. Um, we learned that the children of God and the children of the devil are distinctly two different people in the way they act. And love is the determining factor between the two entities. Glory to God. Amen. So this world would be a better place if everybody was a child of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. I've given y'all some time. It's a blessing to know that uh, Satan tried to be just like God. It's a blessing to know that? Yeah. I would say it was a curse to know that. But well, okay. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. No, I, lesson, oh, no, I think I know what you're saying there. Yeah. You know, he couldn't be like God, so God always knew how to, how to protect himself. Yeah. You know, how to build the church among him own and among the, the righteous people to keep Satan away. Okay. That's a lesson. All right. Um, um, I, so, what is slander a lie? Isn't it a lie? Slander is usually involves a lie. You you can't slander somebody apart from a lie anyway. In, in the Bible, in John chapter eight verse forty four says that he was a liar from the beginning. So we know that he lied on God. But slander all. It, it can also involve some truth mixed with a lie. Because if you tell a pure lie, it's, it, people more than likely ain't going to believe it. But when you mix a little bit of truth in there, and then they'll say, yeah, you know, that sounds like him. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, well, that sounds like something that he would do or she would do. So, yeah, slander usually involves uh, mischaracterizing someone. And slander is also the, <clears throat> the damaging or repetition through gossip. Yes. To show somebody. Yes. Mm -hmm. It really is about them that really they may not be, but we need other people to know that they are this way. Right. And that and that is one of the reasons, thank the good point, Pastor D. That's one of the reasons why God hates gossip in his church. He can't stand it. And, you know, people gossiping about each other. And sadly, as, you know, when we talk about gossip, you know, sometimes ladies like to, you know, we say ladies like to gossip. Um, there's a good talking, you know, that people get together and, and they talk about certain things. And they might call it gossip. That's not really gossip. That's just y'all talking and enjoying each other and having fun. Praise God. Yeah. It's when you're getting together and pss, 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 about somebody when you're putting somebody down when you're talking against your sister instead of praying for her now that's gossip you know but the lady getting together and, and joking with each other and, and talking about you know the world and and jesus and stuff like that that's not gossip you know even though y'all might call it that but that's not really gossiping that's enjoying fellowship with one another amen but if you want to call it gossip you know it's something to be funny it's you know, if you want to be funny about it, well, okay. You know, I don't think God has anything against that. Praise God. But, you know, we, we got to be careful to make the distinction between the two. So gossip involves slander and hurt and, uh, and the de destruction of someone's reputation. And, um, and it's not going to be put up with in God's church. Same thing with strife. We don't put up with strife in, in God's church. Praise God. Amen. I have little doubt uh, when I consecrated on the first 
did a creation where they say that God separated the light from the darkness and he named the light day and the darkness night. Mm -hmm. and, and, morning came, and that was the first day. Right. Um, and what we'll, something confusing about that? Yeah, in, in light of something I was saying? How was it before the separation for it to be the first day? That um, most scholars in, um, and I, I agree with them. They believe that that first day was restoration of the earth. See, when Satan fell and the war in heaven began, and which went down to the earth, then you've noticed in verse two that the darkness was upon the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and you know that God is light, and there is no darkness in Him at all. So if he created, he couldn't have created with darkness all um, present in his creation, praise God. And so something happened where darkness came upon the face of the earth. And notice that um, if you really read it carefully, because a lot of people say, well, God, for that was the first day God created the earth. It doesn't say that. It says that he called, read it again, because I don't have my Bible open. Mm -hmm. Right, but no but notice before that he said, Let there be what? Right. Let there be light. There you go. So that's we know we all know that that's when the sun burst it into being, praise God. Mm -hmm. Um, how, you know, I know scientists can explain the sun's gaseous matters and how it burns and all that stuff, but let's be real. Can't nobody, don't nobody how to, knows how the sun keeps burn, burning and doesn't burn itself out. So, um, so obviously there was no sun there before that, but uh, there had to have been some light before that because God is light. Praise God. And so, um, after that, God had already, he already had a plan. For what he was going to do with the earth. And he was preparing that plan. For his. He was preparing the earth. For that new creation. That he was about to create. That person. Called man. And when I say that person. I'm talking about male and female. Praise God. Amen. And so before. He could put the. He could create the man and the woman. He had to get earth prepared. And he was. He was preparing a different kind of creature. One who would. Um, depend would have need food for energy, one who would need rest and sleep for energy. Praise God, or for restoration of that body He is about to create for them. And so He He was going He was creating a a sun that was going to do many things that the earth that on the earth that the sun does for us. Praise God, except it was going to do something better than what happened before the fall of man. And so all these things God was preparing for on the earth. He was taking the earth back from what Satan did to it. God, God does not believe in wasting anything. Amen. He, Satan destroys, God restores. Satan destroyed man, God restored man. And in um in the new in Revelation it says that God created a new heaven and a new earth. If you look at that in the original Greek, it's not talking about God's going to destroy this earth. Completely blow it out of oblivion. He's going to. It says that he's going to make it new. The earth. This earth is going to be made. Like new. He's going to. It's going to be burnt with fire. All the impurities of sin is going to be gone from this place. Amen. And it's going to be a paradise again. Glory to God. Amen. And you know a lot of people talk about. Oh we're going to live in, forever, in heaven forever. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God's going to come, going to bring Jerusalem down to the earth and he's going to live on the earth forever with his saints. Praise God. So this is going to be God's place forever and ever. So but so Satan destroys the earth again, as he did through the as he's doing right now through the fall of man. God's going to going to destroy everything he's done after Satan's been thrown into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. And the earth is going to be a new earth, praise God. Amen. It's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. And 
sin will never exist again on this earth. Hallelujah! Amen. Ooh, I could preach that. If I, if I didn't have somebody preaching on Sunday, I, I would preach that myself. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's it's encouraging to, to know that. Yeah, this is this life is not going to be like it is. Satan, one day Satan's gonna be thrown, gonna be destroyed. Because they're talking about war and these okay, that's it right now. People are so worried and they're going crazy. Yeah. But that's the people need to hear the gospel, you need to hear in the future, you know. If yeah. You come to God's side, you don't need to worry about it. And then hearing it, it makes you want to change. Hallelujah! <laughs> right? Yeah, man. You're like, oh man, what's going on? All right. You stop doing this. <laughs> You know, yeah, it makes me want to keep doing right and find out if I'm doing anything wrong. Let me just let me change it. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we need to preach these messages more often. <laughs> Amen. Chelsea, I see you back there. Did you have any questions? Uh, I will. That's why God basically saying that. Um, well, that's the way people can say there's no I in team. It's mm. Right. Yeah. And it's like, like you said, you say I, that you think about yourself. And God wants you to think of others. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We got to we gotta be others focused like God is. It. There, um, I mean, when we, when we say I, you know, we never want to take any truth to an extreme. Sometimes you got to talk about yourself. Sometimes you got to describe yourself. Sometimes you got to pray for yourself. Praise God. But and you got to take care of yourself. You got to eat well. You got to exercise. You got to um, drive a decent car because you need to get back and forth to work, and you don't need to be stopping on the road. So you need things for yourself. Praise the Lord. But when you when it's just nothing but about you, that's where the issue comes in. When it, if I if it's just me and my family and that's it. Then I then I'm a sad representation of Jesus. Christ. I'm really no representation of Jesus Christ. But when I when um when it comes to thinking about what I'm doing and am I doing it for myself or am I doing it for others, mm -hmm. then that's where the distinction comes between selfishness and others' focus. Praise God. Yeah. So yeah. That was Satan's fall, downfall. He just focused so much on his own ambitions. Didn't care who it hurt. Didn't care about how he hurt God. Didn't care about the, how this was going to hurt all the angels that was following him and believing his lies. He cared nothing about any of that. He only cared about what he wanted. And that's where we. That's where our problem comes in. When we care about what we want at the expense of others and whether it hurts anybody else or not, that's we're following Satan's ways and not God's. Amen. Amen. I will say that the, the I have is himself be problem for Christians today. The I have is, the I have is the flesh. Mm-hmm. The I will is the flesh. <laughs> and who who motivates our flesh? <laughs> Satan! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Our daily activities, our interaction with people, our work in relationship. That means day to day is the that that I is a battle. Now we have to fight. Because as human beings, Jesus, every time on the phone talk, he say. As I see my father do. Yes. I do. I do. Yes. Amen. So you, even the focus you are not when you say you say I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. When you hear me say that what well, hear my father say. So everything you are pointing to the father. You mm -hmm. know? Yes. But well, sometimes God gave us some ability. Mm -hmm. You say I can do it. I, I, I. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, when you know you then you don't say I. Every time when you say I, you will back up with the father. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we, even when we come to a point where we say, I, say by his grace, mm. I can. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say, because we are not, 
Jesus said, uh, you can do nothing. No. Apart from me. Yep. Apart from me. Mm -hmm. So, we, as we learn this part of time, we should, we should be more like Jesus. And be more like Jesus. Know how Jesus. Jesus has all the power, everything. Even if the disciple say, if I want thousands of angels, I'll just call my father. Mm -hmm. Yes. You will say thousands of angels. So you are always friendly. Everything attribute to the fire. Yes. So we should also learn the attribute of the fire when we the group, the meeting group. We always say, what if also ever that so now when so now when we pray, we pray to us and it's never when I pray them out. That's when I say, don't say ah, say we. Mm. <laughs> so now we're talking something or say something. Say, I say, don't say, I, that I say, when you were group, it's, or you doing something, once you were people, you always say, we. Yeah. Even yeah. though maybe yeah. you're taking the responsibility, yeah. you there, you the shiny light, but once you gather people, even they don't do something, but they, they find that they're present. Mm -hmm. So that you keep humble, you always say, we. It will help us. Amen. But we can forget, so let's pray that God will give us a grace. So always friend of whatsoever we are. We are in ministry, what God has sorted or give us some benefit or some space. Whatsoever. You know, stay that you don't have to be in ministry, but everywhere God for us, we are leader of whatsoever we are doing. You should always have to do that to God according yeah. to Jesus. Mm. And in addition to what she said. You are always